by both sides were very similar. What usually determined the regiment or the legions was the, the flag that the uh, army marched under. That determined whether they were royalist or parliament. So once in the battle, you'd always look for the colour to follow to identify which side you were on. You were on, yes. And you can imagine it got a little bit chaotic in battles. So it was one of those uh, violent affairs where a lot got maimed and killed and yeah. left on the battlefield. Yes, yeah. to die. <laughs> to die. Because mm. obviously medication then was very limited. Mm. Mm. So the whole idea was to try and avoid getting injured. Yes, yourself. By injuring your opponents first. Mm. Well, you've got a lot of protection with that um, helmet, haven't you? I have, yes. It's uh, nicely rounded, mm. colours the face, mm. protects with the point. Mutton, do you want to tell her? We've got some mutton Morning. over here. We have a shoulder of mutton that was left over, so we've covered it in some herbs to make it taste a bit better. You know this gent. And, um, <laughs> and then we're doing some leeks, onions, bit of wild garlic, um, a few carrots, carrots, um, some new potatoes that we were quite, quite relatively new in the time. Um, then also. Just rendering off some fat from the from the la, um, mutton, and we've got some leftovers from yesterday. Bringing back to heat. I'm going to mix it all together, and uh, well, those who come back from the battle can have something to eat. <laughs> those who happen to die are a bit uh, say, a bit if, hungry. If they come back, if they come back alive. If they come back in a box, they can't have none. <laughs> More for the others. They can have some breakfast though. We've yes, got a lot of breakfast going on. A lot of breakfast going on. Some old ham that needs eating, some stale cheese. A few apples. Crab yeah. apples some uh, hot stale bread. Find some bread like. That's a 70th century tune called Daphne, it's from a, the tune of a song about the, the mythological story of Apollo and Daphne, it's played on the tenor recorder. If it works, you get your eyesight back. If it doesn't, if it doesn't you were going blind anyway, and there's no, there's no refunds on the fee. So, but the, the more common one is this one. Um, everybody's aware that the body has four basic elements that balance out. And one of the four elements is blood. Um, you see people um, you know, often from certain parts of the world. So some people are very red faced, always hot and angry. And they're, they're called a sanguine character. Yes. So a sanguine character has a surfeit of blood. And the, the easiest method is get out my bleeding bowl. And we put the bleeding bowl tap the fleam into the arm and take a bowl full off and once you've had the bowl full of blood turn it but you're not a hot red faced looking no, person so no. you probably probably don't need it and what the trained bandsmen are i mean because of course there's no standing police force or standing army what you've got to have is the people who are, who are willing to look after the town so of course if you've got a stake in it if you own a shop you don't want people rioting and causing because they might be breaking your windows taking your stock yeah. so you'd be expected to turn up as a trained bandsman so they would recruit you you'd volunteer for it but the of the thing was is that you had to buy your own stuff so of course but you want to impress your mates so of course what you would do you wouldn't buy the cheapest stuff going you would go out and you would buy something expensive so people would look at you and say wow you know you can afford that that must mean you're a successful businessman yeah and the matchlock musket that comes first uh, uh, musket. and then you get this this is the flintlock this then then changes they change the name of this later as well they they call this a firelock does the name change but it's the same basic thing I mean, that, that design 
of the flint hitting the frizz and causing the spark and making it go bang you know that that doesn't change now for about 200 years yeah. not not until you get the uh, percussion cap guns yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Right, what I'm I'm actually in the process of making leather bottles, okay? Mm -hmm. So vessels like this um, were leather and wood and horn were the everyday um, materials that day-to-day -day objects were made out of. Um, to actually produce something like that, um, you need to stitch your leather. So these, these pieces are cut out. It's two pieces of vegetable tanned leather put together. Um, I will then double stitch it all the way round um, using uh, linen thread and beeswax to, to um, soften the uh, linen. Once it's double stitched the whole thing is put in water and then it has to be packed with sand so it uh, becomes from a flat shape to what you would recognise as a bottle. Um, at that point it then dries out at that point it is still not waterproof and it's still going to be fla fairly flexible so it'll be soft like this um, and it will just absorb soak up any water going to waterproof it I put beeswax in and heat it up um, so it's a mixture of um, letting the beeswax, molten beeswax, soak in mm -hmm. and brushing it on. There's a piece of beeswax and a quantity like that will be used to waterproof and harden the um, finished item. This is a, an infantry helmet and the cavalry did use them. But, them. With, but with this you can gambol in it. Right. Yeah, this is actually German In the 17th century, it was a quiet time, and then we come along and we make a lot of noise.
over there. Can you see where? That's a fine one to move on. You get a better idea of how they're equipped and what they're wearing. I'm going to give you a rough idea of what they're for. In their hands, they've got a 14 foot length of ash tipped with steel. The ash is there uh, to provide strength and flexibility and not break. The steel is a spear point that goes through armour when driven past and it's there to protect the pikeman from horse and to protect the pikeman's from his horse. The pike are the muscle arm of the sim war. They're there for grunty hand to hand in close fighting. These initial skirmishes are intended to give the rest of the armies time to form up. They're not really there to kill, they're there to cause new skirmishes. The cavalry keep each other occupied, the infantry force stinks, has moved his troops out. He's a very taciturn man from Yorkshire, doesn't say much. You can see in front of most of the columns are drums and colours. They're vital. To show their bravery, the ensigns will march out in front of their blocks and flourish the colours. This is the 17th century equivalent of come and have a go. If you think you have the courage and the bottle, you have to come and take this from me. I've got mates who will protect me. Their commissions were bought by their fathers if they were young, or sometimes in the case of uh, the ensign on my left, they're a grizzled, experienced trooper who's managed to get the flag through some act of insane bravery.
that's the Royalist commander can cloak that gap. I fear it is all over. Unlike 350, 370 years ago, our dead can get up again. And how you get them up is give them a round of applause. They're ordinary men and women, and the sealed knots like them are made of ordinary men and women.